Pasquale Danko for Sapo. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the all new Galaxy A54 5G. So let's get started. Hi friends, welcome. Hello there, how are you doing? Anakka. Hello, what's up? Pasquale Danko for Sapo. It has a FHD Plus Super AMOLED display with a thousand nits of peak brightness. As far as the camera goes, it has a 50 megapixel primary camera which is paired with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro and has got a 30 megapixel selfie camera. To power all this up, it has a 5000 mAh battery and it has a brain which is an Exynos 1380. All this is on paper. How well does it perform in real life? This phone does keep up with what it says on paper. As far as the display goes, the colors are very punchy with the blacks being very deep to a point where you won't be able to differentiate between the bezels and the blackness. At the same topic, the bezels in this phone is almost completely even. The three sides, the top, right and left, are completely even. The chin is slightly larger than the other three sides, which with your naked eye, you might not be able to notice at the first time. At the same topic or display, which has two modes, the adaptive mode and the standard mode. The adaptive mode, as the name suggests, adapts between the two refresh rates, that's 120Hz and 60Hz, because this display is not an LTPO uh, AMOLED display, which means it cannot drop all the way to 1Hz, due to which the efficiency in this phone is not going to be up to the mark of any flagships, but still it's good. The adaptive mode will give you a battery life about 17 hours at the max, whereas the standard mode, which is capped at 60Hz, will give you a, a long battery life up to 21 hours. The battery life in this phone is actually good. For the first two days, I actually thought the opposite, which was pretty trash. Because for the first two days, the maximum it went for 17 hours. But what Samsung tells is two days, which I'm not sure what they mean by. But then after two days, the phone is the software in this phone is able to analyze the usage pattern and optimize the battery accordingly, which meant that after three days of usage, the battery life on this phone went for almost one and a half day, which in terms of Samsung, I guess is two days. The camera on this phone is pretty great. It has a 50 megapixel primary camera, which is paired with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro. The selfie camera is 32 megapixel and is placed in a punch hole layout. All the three cameras are capable of shooting 4K videos at 30 frames per second. The ultra wide and the primary camera don't really have that big of a difference in their color tones or the quality, except when you zoom in, obviously it's an ultra wide. And also, the distortion is not very much in the ultra wide camera. The camera also has an OIS, the 50 megapixel, and also has got post stabilization for all the three cameras. It can shoot up to 4K30 both in the front and the back. Video in the Galaxy A54 5G, as you can see, can shoot up to 4K30. Security things. For security things, we have all sorts of features over here, such as face ID, check, Fingerprint sensor, check, that to in display, check, check, pattern, check, pin, check. Is there any other box that needs to be checked? This phone, out of the box, comes with One UI 5.1, which is based on Android 13. And Samsung promises another four years of major Android updates and five years of security update. It's actually pretty good and pretty safe. Really appreciated, Samsung. The design of this phone, if it seems very similar, because it is, this is the exact design from the S23 series. The front and the back are made of Corning Gorilla Glass 5. And the SIM card tray has a hybrid SIM card, which means you can either put two nano SIMs or one nano SIM with an SD card. And the SD card, this phone supports, can go up to one terabyte. Now, the final tiny bits to be mentioned. The fingerprint sensor in this phone is not the fastest. It does take a second or two to unlock once you place a finger on it. And the vibration haptic motors are really great. They do make the phone feel more lively and it interacts with you. The speakers are pretty dang good. They, are, they do support Dolby Atmos and have a two-piece stereo. The mics are also pretty cool as you would have seen in the video sample. So this phone comes in two variants. One is the 8GB with uh, 128GB of storage and another one is same 8GB of RAM with 256GB uh, of storage. The 128 GB costs 38,000, whereas the 256 GB costs 41,000. So for whom is this phone? 
if you are someone who is into an all rounder phone and which is into a mid range and all you want is just casual good uh, experience with the UI and uh, proper performance with a nice camera then this is the best phone for you in case you are someone who is interested in a flagship obviously go for the flagship and not the mid range and if you are someone who is focused on gaming please don't go for this go for something which is meant for gaming this phone is an all rounder which means it can do all but it's not perfect in anything and um, one last thing if you have any wired earphones it's time to say goodbye to them because this phone doesn't have one back to the desk thank you all for staying till the end of the video with me if you found this video interesting please do like comment share and subscribe yo bro the pixel 6 is for 35k on amazon right oh come on man